Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Lisboa, which is another huge, huge complex game from Vital Lacerda, uh, creator of, you know, Kanban, CO2, Vinos, and a few more. Anyway, this is all about a real thing that happened in Lisboa in the 1700s. They were beset at the same time by an earthquake, which caused a tsunami, which caused days of fires, and it was all but destroyed. And this is basically us playing through the rebuilding of Lisboa. So if you've played any Vita Lizard games before, you'll know that they tend to be huge, complicated beasts that uh, although according to the man himself, all you do in this game is play a card and then draw a card, which technically is true. Uh, so hopefully I will do a good enough job of explaining what I'm doing as I go along so you can pick up how the game plays. But I would recommend that you watch uh, Paul Grogan's Gaming Rules video, which is the official rules video for the game. And uh, that will do a much better job of helping you to learn it because I make mistakes from time to time. And hopefully if you turn on the Klingon subtitle channel, you will see them noted up. Also, I will say that this is not a strategy guide in the slightest, and I will very likely make some very silly moves. I'm going to be going solo today, which has kind of become a tradition of my Vital Lacerda videos. Uh, I did an unofficial one for Kanban and then the official one, the official variants for Gallerist and Vinyos. Uh, this is another one where we're playing against Lacerda, who has some different rules to how we play, but like the gallerist, he's very predictable and you can use him to your advantage sometimes. Okay, let's get started then. My starting clergy tile, I got to choose from two of them and I picked this one, gives me extra influence for my ships. At the moment I don't have any ships, so let's change that. I want to do the action of building a ship which is here and I've got two options. I can either go to the royal court and I can speak to the prime minister, the master builder or the king himself to do these, to do some of these actions and the main action that they control. Or I could go about it a different way and trade with the nobles. I could offer them some of my goods to be able to do their smaller actions. I can't do these main actions though. For now, I think I just want to trade with the nobles. So I need to pick one of these cards to do this with. I can pick any card and it's going to go into my portfolio and give me some bonuses. Now if I played any of these, the bottom shows you what you get straight away. So straight away I would get a good, I could get a plan, I could get an official, which would go out onto the board. And these would be permanent bonuses that would stay out so I could get some more influence, which could be really good for me. Or I could play these cards. Now these, when played to the, the royal court, let you do the action, it would let me do the build action, which normally I need to go and visit the builders to do. Uh, and these work differently. This is what happens now. You get some money and then adjust the treasury marker over here. And this would go into the bottom. And every time I salt, every time I remove a an earthquake cube or a tsunami damage cube, then different things would happen. For now, though, I think I am going to spend this card to do it. It goes into my portfolio. And right now I can put an official out on the board. And I'm going to put it over here because Lacerda is going to go there next, I think, and I want to make it a bit more expensive for him. This slides in here now. I've got three spaces on the top for cards or ships. And I have got an influence up there now whenever I would gain influence. At the start of the game, you have a limit for the number of goods that you can have of each type, which is two, and the number of cards you can have in your portfolio in total. So I've got one towards that two at the moment. So I've played the card to my portfolio and this would now let me do the sell goods action if I wanted to, but there are no ships to sell goods to, so we can ignore that and just trade with the nobles. So to trade with them, they want certain goods. The builder wants tools to be able to do either one of his actions. I need to spend one each for each action I want to do of his. The prime minister wants books and the king wants fabric and they will all accept gold. Gold is a universal resource. I want to build a ship for sure, so I am going to place this on here because you can only do each one once and you do a maximum of two in one action. So I'm gonna build a ship. If we look over here at the ship that's available, it's this size one ship. 
To build a size one ship, you need to give up any one good. Just realized I need to pay a book and not the tools. I want the tools for the other action that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna give up this fabric because I'll, I'll keep the gold until I need to use it. So I'm gonna give this up to buy the ship. The ship comes to the top of my portfolio here. And this is going to tell us to do a couple of things. We need to move the treasury marker up a space to here. It always starts in the middle at zero. And then I gain influence. And whenever you gain influence, you just look along the top. So I get one, two, three, four, five, six because of my clergy tile. My ship is worth an extra two. And it's great for me because I start the game on four because I'm the first player. And that puts me up to 10. Whenever you hit 10, you get a wig. Wigs are points in this game. So I go from my starting five to six. And that's it, that is my ship built. And then I'm gonna spend my tools to add two officials over here. They have to be in different places, different offices. So I'm gonna grab two of them and let's put them in here again to make this more expensive. And he is going to go in here next. So let's, uh, Let's make this one more expensive as well. No, actually, let's put it there because I've got no one in there yet. Make all of them a bit expensive. So I played a card into my portfolio. It went into the top. I traded with the nobles and now I take a new card. So I've always got five in my hand and it's my choice what I want to take. This is what's available and I'd want to consider, you know, the bonuses for if I played it to my portfolio or, you know, if I played this, you can play these events and you have to pay for them but I could get myself two tools. I think I'm gonna grab a king card because I haven't got one yet. And that was it, simple right? You just play a card and draw a card. So now it is Lacerda's turn. So the first thing he does is move his courtier. He started here at random, we just drew a card and placed him in the king. So he moves to the next space, which is the builder. Lacerda needs to pay the influence cost for going in to visit the builder and the cost is the number of officials there that aren't yours. So he needs to pay three, discounted by one based on the treasury value. So he pays two. Then he's gonna take a state action. That's what these smaller actions are. He is going to take the one of the space that he's on and the one that he chooses is determined where his helper is. This is just an official of a, a player color that isn't involved in the game. Uh, just like these are, these are for a two player game to kind of tighten it up a little bit so that there's more people in the offices. Uh, this was random as well where he started. If he's above the builder or the minister deck, which he is, he does the bottom action. Otherwise the other two decks he would do the top action. So he is going to get a plan for the plans. We come over here to the pile. He takes the one with the most architects on it. It's a tie and if there's a tie, he grabs the blue one. That just goes into his area. Now he is going to take the noble's action and build a store. So this is gonna work a bit differently when I need to do it because I need to pay money and all sorts. But for Lacerda, he chooses the space that gives him the most wigs straight away. Now the wigs are determined by the public buildings that are out. We put this one out in setup. And so on this row, pink buildings will score. So he wants to put a pink building out. The amount of points they're worth is down to the column that they're in here, which is again random due to the setup. So he wants to put a pink building out here and it's gonna be here. He can only put a pink here or here and this one is worth five, whereas this one would be worth four, so he's gonna go here. He ignores the bonus of the space. Now these are a special thing to randomize the game every time. There are, there are things pre-printed on the board so you can have it the same every time, but these will just mix it up so it will be a little bit different every game. He doesn't get that bonus. We grab the shop from here and place it there uh, with the, the little uh, notch in it facing you know, the street that it's meant to be, a pink street. We grab one of his houses and place it here. He doesn't need to pay for the shop at all and he always removes the least expensive cube from the row or column where the shop is. Uh, if there's a tie, which there is because red is, uh, red is two, blue is one, so he takes the least expensive, he'll take a blue, and if there's a tie, because there is one in the row and the column, he takes the one from the bottom of the column. And that makes it a bit cheaper for me to build in this column now, but he always you know, does the one that will, uh, will least benefit me. Then he scores the store as usual, because he was in that five column, he gets five wigs. At the end of his turn, he discards the card where he has the helper, and we reveal a new one. His helper moves up 
to the next deck. And that's that, simple as that for his turn. And now it's back to me and I have to decide what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna have a quicker turn for now and I am going to sell some goods. So if something goes into my portfolio again, I can choose to discard a card when my portfolio is full, so I'll get rid of that one. This is gonna come underneath here and I get the money that is on the treasury value, that's four money. Now maybe worth mentioning actually that these are an extra, these metal coins. It comes with very nice looking cardboard coins in the normal game. Then the treasury marker comes back down here and this slides underneath here. This power will basically, when I build, you pay the cost of the rubble cubes that are in the row and column. This lets me ignore the blue ones. And so now I can trade with the nobles. I'd only get to do it once, but I'm gonna sell goods. I'm hoping to get a lot of money. To sell goods, you can sell one or more goods to any built ships. So unfortunately, this is the only one built. Well, actually it wouldn't matter because I've only got one good. It goes on here and I get the value of the goods that are on here. So six money. This is now the limit of the ship. Once a ship is full, you flip these over and the ship's owner gets that many wigs. So I get a wig. And as always, I need to draw a card. I am just going to grab that one that makes blues more, exp well, more valuable to sell. I am possibly gonna try and get some blue buildings. We'll see how that goes. Back to Lacerda, he moves over one. His, um, his state action is still on the bottom because his helper is on the bottom. So he is going to generate goods. And he generates one fabric because that's the shop he's got. And whenever you generate goods, the price is driven down of that good type. The good goes in his play area and now he's going to get to take decrees. He always takes the two decrees from the left on the display, puts them in his play area, and then everything slides along and two new ones come out. These are end game scoring opportunities. He discards the card where his helper is and moves the helper up. So I know that next turn he is going to open a public building and move the cardinal on the clergy track. I think now though I want to build and I know that he's gonna to get to follow me. So I'm going to visit the nobles. This is a bit different to what we've done before. To visit the nobles, you place your card up here so this shows I am visiting the master builder. In a game with more players, you would put your courtier on here to remind them that it's your turn because as we will see in a minute, people will get to follow you. I need to spend influence. There is only one person here that isn't me. So I spend one influence to go there. I may take one of the state actions so I could grab a plan or put some officials out. I think I'm gonna put some more officials out. Two more officials. I know he's going here next, so let's make this one more expensive. They have to be in different locations, so let's place one here because he's gonna follow me and have to pay a lot of stuff. That was the state action. Now the noble action is build a store. So this works differently to how he did it a little bit. I know that next time he builds and he's gonna follow me because he started the game with one of these royal decrees. It could be any of the three actions and you can spend these to follow somebody who has visited a noble. So he's going to follow me. I know that. And I know that he's going to build here. So I want to get in there in front of him. I don't want to let him get four wigs. So I choose where I want to go. It's going to be here. There is a pink one available. There only wouldn't be if it was someone else's turn and I was following and they'd already built a pink building. I'm going to flip it this way around. So I place it on this street. I get this reward, which is a plan. And it depends, like the plan that you want, I've got a blue one to start with. The plans are which public building you would be able to build if you took that action. I think since I've got a blue one, let's take a green one. And they go on there. Then I can take a rubble cube from this row or column. And I basically, well, there, there are a few things that go into it. I might want to take this because the earthquake cubes are going to cost me the most, three each for every one of those that's still there. I am gonna take that, but another reason you might wanna change your mind in future is you wanna build up sets of these rubble cubes to unlock these markers, and then you can have more goods of each type, more cards out in your portfolio, and you know it spirals out of control from there. So I've removed that, and now I need to pay for the land. So each red costs two, for me, each blue costs nothing because I have got this card out there. It's only saving me one per cube, but it's, it's good. So I need to pay two for the column, four, six. And I need to add on the treasury value. I need to pay nine altogether. 
I've got quite a bit of money from what I did last time, so I will pay nine. And one of my houses is gonna go on there. I get to pick which one it is. It has to come from the bottom of one of these columns, and it depends what I want to do, basically. I could make it so I can spend money instead of influence once I've gotten both of the houses from this column. If I, As soon as I've done the bottom one here, I can get ships for one good cheaper, which could be very nice, and then at the top I don't pay for ships at all. Or, I'm gonna go for this one, I think. This lets me, when I produce, I produce one extra of something of my choice. If I get to the top, all of my, um, each type produces one extra. So I'm gonna put this one out. Again, it goes facing the street where I built it. And because of that public building, just like for Lacerda, I am gonna score four wigs. So now I'm on 11. So since Lacerda has this royal favor, whenever whenever he has the opportunity to, he will follow. So you can predict that as well. When you follow somebody's action, and this is true in a multiplayer game, you need to pay influence for the spot you're going to. That's four influence for him. He hasn't got that. So any influence you haven't got is paid in wigs, so he needs to lose a point. Because there's no discount now from the treasury tile. When you would follow in a normal game, you get to pick one of these three things. Lacerda always picks the main noble action. Which is why I made sure I built there, because I knew he was going to. Now it just so happens that there is nowhere worth wigs at the moment. In the future they may be worth, worth wigs once the public buildings have gone down. But there aren't any, so he always builds in the leftmost space of the topmost row. Because I built the pink building, that's not available for him. Which is good because, you know, there's majority for these at the end of the game. So he is going to build in this space, but it's going to be a gold building. So he grabs that, puts it over here, puts his house out, and he gets rid of the least expensive cube. Uh, there is one in the row and the column, so he takes the one from the bottom of the column here. Okay, it's still my turn, remember? It's the end of my turn now. So I might just want to... I might just want to grab another one so I could potentially visit him again next time. I think I'll do that. Just so I've got some options and I could potentially visit any of the nobles. Okay, it's Lacerda's turn. So back to his routine. He moves his courtier to the next one. I can take mine off that card now, not that it ever needed to be on there. He is going to visit the king this time. His helper has moved to the top half of the stacks, so he's going to do the top action, and he is going to go to the cardinal. And I haven't done this yet. He is going. He moves the cardinal two spaces, and he will discard the clergy tile in front of him and get the number of wigs on the back of it. That's three wigs. The missing tile refills. And it's going to be this one. I'll, I won't go through everything that they are. Maybe when I take one, I'll explain some. But they are very handily. You know, the reason this is so big is because it tells you everything you could possibly want to know. It tells you what every single clergy tile does. Oh, he hasn't paid influence yet, has he? He needs to pay three influence. None of those are his. And he has no influence right now. So he is going to pay three points. So he's going to go from 12 to 9. And the noble action is to build a public building, so we come over to the two that are available. You can also see the two that are next as well to plan ahead. He always builds the one that will benefit him the most. You know, uh, you work out the number of points that it would gain him and take away the number of points it would gain you. Uh, so basically, he is going to put this one down because I haven't got a gold building. So he decides where to put it by starting in row D in the west and going clockwise around. So he's going to place it here because it's going to make it score for him. All of this stuff, this goes to him and nobody gets this bonus. And the public building scoring works retroactively. So he is going to get four wigs for that shop that he built previously. Ooh, I'm almost forgetting that I started the game with a royal decree for the king. I'm going to spend that. So... I'm going to come in. I only have to pay one influence because they're mine. And I can do any of them. I can get another royal decree, which would be a bit of a waste, wouldn't it? I could get another clergy tile, which is potentially more powers and things throughout the game. But I want to build a public building and base it on what I want to build next. I think the next thing I'm going to build is a blue building. Now, I was going to build a blue building, but I think... If I built either building in these spaces, I would get these rubble cubes and complete, you know, uh, I would complete a set. 
and unlock that. So I think I'm still going to go, I'm going to go with the green because it's going to cost me fewer meeples, uh, not meeples, officials. It's going to cost me two rather than the three it would take to build the red one. I'm going to put it here. I think I'm going to build a brown one next. So blue would be really nice to tie into this and it would score twice. Yeah, that would be very nice, but I'm going to wait. So there's lots of decisions to think of here. So I have to do this one because it's got blue on it. I'm going to put it up here, which gets me a blue good. And it gets me not quite the ones that complete a set, but it's gotten me a little bit closer, hasn't it? I should put them in the right spaces. Now the plan says three on it, so I need to remove three of my officials from the offices. I want this one to keep being expensive, so I'm going to grab these three. We flip the plan into my completed section, and it scores at the moment no stores at all. Okay, it's my actual turn now, and before Lacerda gets a chance to, I need to go and have a word with the Master Builder. Again, it's going to cost me one influence. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but similarly to how it works in the gallerist, you can drop down to the next coin symbol on the influence track to get discounts when you pay for things. I think I'm going to put some more officials out. I like doing that. So I am going to put one in here, make it even more expensive because I know he's going there next. and I know he's going there after that. Then it's time to build a store again. And I want to build a store here because it's going to score twice, once for this column and once for this row. So how much is that going to cost? If I'm getting rid of one of these, and this one's free, it's going to cost three, five, seven, ten, which I have. Brilliant. So I'm going in this space. I could go into that one, but that column's only worth three. And, you know, it could depend on the bonus you want as well. If I went there, it would put me up to ten, and I'd get another point. But I'm going to go here. I need a little blue one, because it's going in this column. So that's going to go there. The reward I get is a rubble cube of my choice from the six set aside that were left over. There are more left over in a two play game because you don't use this row at all, but I get to choose and I might as well choose the one that's going to unlock my ability here. So now I can have three of any good, three, uh, what am I thinking of? Three cards out at the same time. And this goes on the prime minister. When I gain decrees, I can give that cube up to get an extra decree whenever I do that action. I'm gonna take that rubble cube, I've already got it by me. Uh, I'm gonna take that rubble cube and put it in my area. And I have to choose which house I want. I'm gonna keep going up this column and grab that one, place it out there. And the city scores for both of these public buildings because there's blue on here, and there's two colours on here, but it only matters the one for the street that it's in. So this scores twice. That's eight wigs for me. So I'm on 19 now. I draw again, and I think I may want to keep visiting the builder. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to need a lot of money before then, though. Over to Lacerda, and he is going to move over here. His help is at the top, so he's going to put some officials out. So he picks the offices where he's got the fewest. He's going to put one there. And he wants to put one here. Oh, he needs to pay first. He needs to pay five influence, which is five points. So he's set back to eight there. Uh, but now he he doesn't kick me out. He puts me out into the courtyard. So I still I can I can use him still for uh, the plans and things, but I don't count for the influence cost. Uh, this meeple can never be. This official can never be kicked out in a two-player game. Then the main action is build a shop, and he's going to get to do something you know, almost as good as I did really actually. He is going to build the blue one here because he's going to be able to do the same as I did, except he is only going to get six points from it. So he's on 14, puts one of his dudes out there, then discards this card and he moves back to the bottom. For my turn, I am going to go and visit the Prime Minister. Yes, I think that's what I'm going to do. I need to pay two influence to go and do it, unfortunately. I need to produce stuff, I think. And I can pick one of the types and produce two of it. So I'm going to produce two blues and one pink. And I can have three blues because of that bonus I've had before. I need to build another ship, really, which I might have to go back and visit him again. The price of those goods, unfortunately, goes down. And I can take a decree from the display too if I spend the you know the set cube that I've put up there. So they're all end game scoring. This is two points for every gold building you've got out, a point for every public building that's in the west. There's two at the moment. A point, uh, five points if you have the most stores on the C row or you're tied. Uh, a point for every decree card that you've got. 
a wig, I'll stop saying point, a wig for every book good that you've got at the end of the game, five wigs if you've got at least one good of every kind, five wigs if you have the most completed green plans, and a point for just every store you've got on the pink street. I think the left is going to fill up quite quickly. And if I can make myself have the most C's, or just a point for each decree card. Yeah, that I'm going to have those two. So I need to spend this cube because I'm taking two. Everything shifts along. And two new ones come out. I need a new card. I think I might need to go and see the Prime Minister again if I want to build a boat. So let's do that. Lacerda is going to the Prime Minister himself. He needs to pay two influence. He still has none. And so he drops down two points. He's on the bottom half again, so he's going to produce. He produces a blue, a pink, and a gold. Oh, and he makes them cheaper. He's robbing me of money. Uh, anyway, then, then what does he do? He does the main thing. He takes these two decrees, doesn't he? And we slide them along again. He discards this card, flip that up, and then he goes there. Simple. I need some money, so I am going to play this. I get the money of the treasury token, which is three, and we lower it. And I'm making blue goods better for myself to ship. I think I'm just going to ship now. So I'm going to ship this blue good. Blue is worth two, three, four, and my ship is full, so I get one wig. I think I'm going to take this card. At the end of the period happens as soon as some, as soon as I complete two sets of rubble or three of the card decks are empty. Lacerda moves over. He needs to pay just one influence, so one wig. Then he is on the bottom, so he's going to get a royal decree. Royal favour, I keep saying decree. Uh, he gets the builder one. He starts in the builder and goes right, grabs the builder one. And then he is going to open a public building. So the one that would benefit him the most is this one, I think. And it would benefit him the most. Well, he starts from here and he's got the choice of either putting it on the street or putting it to the east over there. He'll put it up here. And scores himself four points. Discards this card. Grabs a new one. And this guy goes up. I am going to go and see the king, I think. It's going to cost me two influence. I am going to... I think I'm going to move on the clergy track. Let's see what these tiles do. So this is whenever I go and... Whenever I play a king card, so whenever I go and visit the king and play it to the royal court, I get two reyes. This is a discount of one influence every time I visit a noble. That's quite attractive. Because I can move in one to two spaces and then decide on the tile I want that's either side of him. Oh, and this top one is each of your ships is worth two uh, when it's full, two extra wigs when it's full, and the ship is worth more in endgame scoring. I want this one. I want this one. So he has to move two, and uh, he took the one in front of him. Whenever he passes this space, the treasury marker goes back up, and we get a new tile to replace that one. So that was my state action my noble action is put a public building out i am going to do i've only got a uh, green plan so it's going to be a green uh, public building so it's going to be this one and i think i'm going to put it if i put it up there i'm going to complete a set and end the period so i don't think i want to do that i'm going to put it over here so i've got a chance to score it as well because lasuda is going to get to build there so i can grab a pink good and i get these rubble cubes and it doesn't trigger any scoring just yet. Uh, this flips over and I need to spend two officials. I'll spend this one that's just floating around and this one here because Lacerda's about to pay for those. Okay, and we go again. So he comes over here. He needs to pay four influence, no discount. So four points. So back down to 11. And then he will do the top one. He puts two officials out where he has the least. If there's a tie, he starts from the left, and it's worrying because his things are never removed. Just like this one, so I am kind of squeezed out, and the builder is going to start getting really expensive in terms of influence. And actually, I think I've helped him out here. 
He always builds building left if he's got a choice. This is the best spot to build in. And it's going to earn him five points. He discards this card and moves up. I'm going to go and visit the builder, which is dangerous because so can Lacerda. Yeah, let's spend this card. And it costs me one, two, three influence now. That's all of my influence, but hopefully I can get it back. I'm going to put some officials out. There and there. And I do need to get some plans, actually, in the future. Uh, and then I am going to build... I think it's going to be here, because I can afford here, I think. It's going to be a gold one. So the bonus I get is a plan. And I think I most want this one to come out, so I'm going to grab this blue one. I'm going to bring the top one out. And so it's going to cost me... I'm going to take one of these reds. So it's going to cost me two... Don't pay for the blue. Four, seven. This scores immediately, so that's four wigs. One, two, three, four. And then Lacerda is going to spend his royal decree and follow me. That's going to cost him one, two, three. So that's three wigs. One, two, three. And he is just going to build, isn't he? The most he can get is four. So the topmost row, that would get him nothing. Here he could build a gold and get four. Although he can't build a gold building, actually. Because I built it. And it's not available until the end of my turn. So it'll be here. This blue building is what he will have. He gets four wigs. One, two, three, four. And I need a new card. I will just grab this one. Lacerda's turn. He goes here. He's on the top still, so he's going to build a ship. Yeah, he takes the top ship, moves the treasury marker up as usual, but then he gets influence. Oh, he should have paid influence, shouldn't he? He should have paid three influence, so that's three points. One, two, three. He gets influence equal to the ship he just bought, which is two plus my portfolio, so he gets five influence. So he's going to stop spending points for a little while. But this is available for me to start building on. It's going to give him points, but... Yeah, at least, at least I can start selling and getting some bigger chunks of money. Then for his main action, he takes those two decree cards. He discards the top card from here and comes back down to the bottom. Now I want to sell some goods. I think I'm going to put this out. I did want to get that ship, but it hasn't worked out too badly. I can put two officials out. So I'm going to put one there and one there, because this, I can't knock anyone out of this one. I should put it on camera, shouldn't I, when I'm talking about it? So that goes in there, and now I get to sell goods. I'm going to sell both of these and one of my pinks. So what do I get? I get two for the pink and then four for each of the blues because of this. So I get ten plus two because this ship's worth one extra for every ship you sell to it. So I get twelve. The ships are full, so Lacerda gets two. And I get one, two, three because of my bonus. I need a new card. I think I'm going to take this one because I would like some books. Lacerda's turn. He frees up his ship. And then he is going to go and visit the king, which is going to cost him three minus one. It's going to cost him two influence. He's actually got influence. And, oh, he doesn't go on this space because there's no cards there. He goes on this space, he's going to do the bottom thing, get a royal decree for the builder again. And then put out a public building. Which one benefits him the most? I think he's going to put one in the pink street because that's going to benefit him 10 and me 4. So 6 points to him is the most, I think. If there's a tie, it depends where he is. His helper's on the bottom, so he'll build the blue one. There's not many blue ones left, is there? Uh, that's going to go up here. And he's going to get 10 points and I'll get 4. So he is on 26. I am on 31. Put that on camera, eh? <laughs> then he's going to discard this card and it's going to be the end of the period, I think. Now, I should probably have used this to finish a set. I should have known that was coming. If we were playing, uh, if we were playing a bit better... I should have known that was coming and used this and got an extra set of rubble and ended the period myself because now you get three wigs for every set of rubble you've completed. So I only get three. 
Lacerda gets a wig for every cube, and he's got two, four, six, eight in there. Wow. I should probably have grabbed a king card as well now because we have the option of discarding up to five cards. And for each different noble, so basically once per noble, I can discard them for their benefit. So I'll definitely discard these to get the bonus. I will grab a blue cube so I have got my bonus. I'm going to grab a green royal favour as well. And then do I want to get rid of any of these? I think let's get rid of that and that. And then we'll draw more in a minute. And then the exact same way that these happened, we replace them but with brown decks instead. Okay, there we are. And the game will end when that happens again, when three more decks are empty, or when if I can complete four sets of rubble. And I draw back up to five cards, but from the purple deck. So I've got, just purely by accident, and I didn't make this appear at all, uh, there is the heavy cardboard promo card that you can get. This looks like it's a it's an event card that you can make happen. You sponsor an event, and you can pick any of the main noble actions. Now I want to start building ships or producing or something, and I can't do that without books. So the easiest way to do it, I think, is to play this. I'm going to sponsor an event. So I play the card to the court, and I will pay the treasury value, which is four, and I will get two books. Lacerda goes there. He needs to pay one, two, three, two. He's in the top half, so he's going to add two people. First one will go here, where he's got the fewest. And then he'll go to the left again and push me out. And then he will build a shop. Oh, maybe he should have built here before, actually. This is on the pink street. I'm not sure if that happened before. And he can build a pink shop here. So, yeah, that will be his option. He'll go there. And that is going to score him five wigs. I've got my builder here. I could follow. I would need to pay four influence, so three with the treasury discount, and it would have to come from my points. So I don't think I'm going to just yet. I am going to try and get some influence back first. While staring at that space, I realized that I hadn't put the ships on yet. So Lacerda is going to discard the top card here, and then he will move his helper up there. Okay, I am going to trade with the nobles. I'm going to put this up here, get rid of this one. And my two actions, they're going to be used with these. I am going to produce. So that's going to go on there. And I produce an extra one for each type. So I've got gold, pink, and the tools. So I get two each of those. So a lot of goods, but everything is driven down again, apart from the brown, which unfortunately I'm going to have to spend to do my next action. I'm going to have to spend some good, good goods to do this. So I need to spend three different goods because I've still got, uh, I've not got my houses in here. I feel like I'm falling behind on a lot in the game, to be honest. But let's see how we get on. So I'm going to buy this ship. I need three different types of good. Then the treasury goes up to the maximum now. And I score influence, and if I've done this right, so this is plus two on each of the ships, so three plus five is, so I've actually worked out wrong. Three plus five is eight, plus three is 11. You can't earn 11, I am at zero, but now I'm back up there and I get a wig. The excess just does nothing. Unfortunately, yeah, Lacerda's gonna build a ship now and he's gonna get a lot of influence. So that's possibly bad timing on my part. And then it's Lacerda's turn, so we go there. And he needs to pay three minus one, two influence. So one of those is going to be a wig. He's at the top, so he's going to build a ship. And he gets influence equal to this plus mine. So he's going to get six, seven altogether, which is a shame because that's some points he could have been losing. For the main action, he takes the two decrees. I think now it's time for me to sell some goods and start making some money. Oh, thinking about it now, I would have had to lose something. I've got too much in my portfolio, so I would, I'd lose that one out of any of them. I think I'm going to play this one because I would like a plan. I'm going to take a green one. And then I'm going to sell goods. I'm going to keep the gold around so I can use it to produce. So I'm going to sell these four. 
So yeah, that's the spaces of my ships. I'll only sell to my ships. Oh, this should have long gone. So what do I make? The pinks are actually only worth one. Yeah, I'll sell them just so the ships are full though. So I get two, three, four, plus two each for these, six, eight, plus two each for these, 10, 12, 14. Then these are full up, so I'm gonna get four wigs plus two for each ship, so six, eight wigs. Lacerda's turn, he's gonna go over here. He needs to pay three minus one, two influence. Then he is at the bottom now, so he's gonna get a royal decree, which will be this one, because he's already got the green one. And then he's gonna build a public building. I think this one gets him the most if he puts it over here, pink buildings, and it's in the five. Point column and gets me nothing, so it gets him five wigs. Back to me, and I think, no, I'm gonna pay so um, so Lacerda won't get to follow me. So I'm gonna put this out, it costs five, unfortunately. And I wanna leave myself with enough money to be able to follow Lacerda and buy a shop somewhere, really, if I can work that out. So the most for points right now is here. Either of these, this one is the most. And then Lacerda's probably going to build there next. So I'm going to go over here. And I want to end up with a blue, really. So I would have to pay 2, 4, 6, 11 with that. Which is quite a way, isn't it? I could get some discount, though, if I'm, I'm going to have to pay influence to go and see. I'm going to have to pay 3 influence to go and see them. So it's less to drop down now. So I'll, I'll try and get the discount later if I can afford somewhere. 11 money. Oh, the bonus of the space was a book which is good, I need those. There's not much point getting a discount on ships because they've all been built, so let's try and work this way so I can use money as influence. Put this out, and I score eight wigs. Lacerda's turn, he comes over here. He's gonna grab a plan, the one with the most on, and tie break, he takes the blue. And then building a shop, I think it's absolutely this one. So there should be another little one there. He builds that on the blue. That's his last shop, actually. So when he follows me, he won't be able to do anything. And he's going to score six for that. He'll get rid of this red, because it's the cheapest and on the bottom. And then I'm going to follow, definitely. So I need to pay three to follow. I want to put a brown there, because that, that's the only thing left in the five column. But I think even if I took this three off, it's going to cost me three, five, six, seven, twelve. And I can only get one, two, if I spend all of my influence, I can put something there. Seems like too much influence to spend, to be honest. But let's do it. So I'm going to spend seven plus all of my money and all of my influence to put a shop here. It better pay off. I'm going to point it at pink. It's going to come from here. So now I can use money as influence, actually. So if I can make some money, I will be fine. I'm going to get a pink. And that building scores once, which is five. Lacerda discards a card and moves up. Okay, I think I want to produce and do something else and then load up the ships next turn for some money. Yeah, I'm gonna discard that card and place this one in. So I'm gonna get a clergy movement and I want to make him move twice. One, two. I can take this one. Whenever I advance the clergy marker, I can move it two extra steps instead. Or well, this one would let me produce an extra good, which is tempting. Since the score, there's going to be an influence scoring now, there's going to be church scoring, so we lay him down to identify that. I'm going to take this one because of that, because I, I, if I want to score influence, I need to give up a clergy tile. I get the number of points on the back of the clergy tile, so I'm going to take the one with four on, because I want to keep these, I think. Yeah, what I'm going to do is use this to get a decree. I'm going to get this decree so I can follow Lacerda next turn, and then I'm going to use this to produce. So all of my things produce. So I now get three pink, because I produce one each for the shops anyway, and I get three blue. They can't go down any lower, which is okay. Uh, so, is that it for me? I do, I was, I was doing that. Yep, I've done two things, so that's the end of my turn. I need a new card. I think I'll take this one, which will let me get decrees. It's the end of the turn and church scoring happens which is actually going to help the Serda as well. I am going to earn 10, more than 10. So I get a wig, which is good. But 
Lacerda gets equal to his ships plus my portfolio. So two, five, eight, nine. Yeah, that puts him to the top as well, unfortunately. But I needed influence. So we stand the Cardinal back up and give him a new clergy tile. Oh, to, to do this scoring, it just automatically, because Lacerda doesn't have clergy tiles, he just automatically gets to do it. I have to give up a clergy tile if I want it to happen, but I do get these wigs. Two, three, four. So it's helped me a bit. Lacerda's next, and he is going to come over here. He's on the bottom, so he's going to produce. What does he produce? One gold, and then one, two, three pink. One two, three, and no brown, and three blue, without any bonuses. And then he just takes the decree cards. So they come out. And I'm gonna follow, it's gonna cost me two and my royal favor. So I think out of the ones here, this is for each ship, I've got two ships, so that's four straight away. And this is how many cards you've got in your portfolio. Uh, I'm going to take two because... Oh, what's this one? It says have one of each type. Number 21. If you have at least one store of each type within six wigs. Yeah, we'll have that one. Thank you. So I need a brown store. I discarded my one of my cubes there. I've got another one. I can only spend one at a time, though. I have to get decrees again. Discards this card and the helper goes up. Okay, I just want to sell stuff but I am going to use this card so I can get... Now, let's use this one because I've got another Prime Minister one. So I can get a Royal uh, Favour again, this time red, so I can follow Lacerda again. And in terms of selling goods, I wish I had some brown, but let's see, these are going to be worth the most. Let's sell all the blues. And then we've got a couple of golds. Oh, yeah, let's let's sell one of the golds as well. I could sell more. I can, you know, fill up Lacerda's with two more things. That gives him two points though. Although, if I put them on here, they're worth more money. And if I don't fill the ship up, he never gets them. So let's sell two of these pinks as well. And another gold? Yeah. As long as I don't sell anything else to that ship, it's not going to set sail. And you don't get the wigs until it's full. So from this action, <laughs> I'm getting... So these are worth four extra, aren't they, at the moment? It's two for my cards, two for the ship. So 5, 10, 15, 18, 21, 24, 25, 26, 29, 32. And I need a new card. This one would let me produce. That's attractive. I'm going to get that. Lacerda is coming to the king, has to pay three, two influence, and he is on the top now, so he's going to move the clergy track. One, two spaces, takes the one in front and gets the wigs. Three. He's on 53 now, he's catching up again, and he's going to put a public building down. He can put both of these down so it only affects him, so I think he'd build this one. If he builds this one, oh, I've got a pink there as well as his blue. I think this works out. He'll put this up here. And this is going to get him four more points than me. Because he is going to get three, five, eight, and I get four. I'm going to follow with my favour. And I'm going to pay the three, two influence. And then I'm going to put one out. I'm going to grab this one, I think. And I'm going to put it up here, which gets me a brown. And he's actually going to trigger the end of the game. So it fills up my columns. I will say now, I don't think I have done very well. Okay, I think I was halfway through a move before I realised that I haven't actually made it. I finished Lacerda's turn. And then to make the action, I'm actually going to have to... Oh, I could do this. Yeah, let's do this. Let's play this treasury card for five and I am going to build with it and then I'll cut back in where I was just doing the action willy-nilly. I'm going to go here and let's take one of these away. So it's going to cost two, four, five, eight. 
get a brown out there which scores three. One, two, three. Get a royal favour for the space which is going to be the green so I can follow. Oh, and for my ships, I am going to get four, six, eight points. Oh, I think I need to draw a new card. I think I will draw one that will get me a decree. Oh, that one would have got me two gold. That would have been nice. So this is, we finish the round and then one more round. So let's say going to get one more go after this. He needs to pay one influence. Oh, these should have been spent. What is going on? My brain is melting a little bit. I did a blue thing. Two guys would have had to come back. It might as well have been those. Yeah, it's, been, it's been a long game, everyone. Excuse me. Uh, so, yes, he is on the top. He's going to put two officials out. Where he has the fewest officials, he's only got one official. So he's going to start here, knock me out of there, and that's all he can do. Then he's going to build. But actually, he's got no buildings, so I assume he does nothing. Uh, this game's maybe gone on for longer than it should. Uh, I assume that he does that. He's got no houses. How could he build anything? Anyway, it's over to me. And I'm following. I'm following, yes. I've got a great amount of money. I'm going to follow for three influence. Three. I'm going to build here, and it's going to cost 14. So I'm going to take that blue. So I've unlocked all of my things, so I'll at least get some bonuses at the end. I'm going to take... This royal decree, I'm, I've just spent this one this turn. It cost me 14 money. It's going to give me a majority on gold as well, hopefully. Uh, this can go out, and it scores three right away. Oh, that's why I wanted to go on that side. I got my blue cube, though. So it's going to score three. One, two, three. So here we go. I'm way, many points ahead, but this is like Gallerist, where you have tiers. It's not just about whether you beat him or not. Oh no, I want blue, not, not pink, because he's going to go to blue as his last turn. Okay, that was Lacerda's turn. He discards this card and comes down again. And so this is my very last action to pick from. He follows me if I do this, but he can't do anything, can he? I can't actually afford to build another building, even if I wanted to. If I put another public building out, he can put one out too. I don't think I'd get that much from it. I think we could use this and then trade with the nobles with these and get another decree card here. So what's available? For every green public building, that's only three. For every blue completed plan, I've done two. So that's four, so that's better. Cards in the portfolio is going to be... Oh, I don't need to get... Oh, I do need to get rid of that card if I'm going to do it from the top. Yeah, I'm not going to get any more cards in the portfolio. I've not got much influence. There are no green public buildings at the top. Uh, for every completed plan, that's only three. The most blue completed plans, probably not. And the most blues. So this is the most then, isn't it? Four. Oh, and I can spend my cube to get another one because I've got loads of cubes up here because I've been neglecting this a bit. And then let's get this. That's four, isn't it? Cards in the portfolio. So they slide down. Oh, they wouldn't slide down until the end of the turn, actually. Just in case I'm doing something. I am making things happen. So the Royal Decrees are worth a point, if nothing else. In case I need the most of some goods, let's just produce. So it's the same as before, isn't it? Three. No, it's three of each. Three of each and two browns. I need a card, so let's just take this one, but it's too late to do anything really. Okay, Lacerda's last turn, he is gonna come over here. He is going to produce, uh, gold was driven down again. So what does he get? He gets a gold, three pink, three blue. And then decrees, he takes these two away. So I'm following with my favor. I need to pay one, two, three, four, three, which is all of my influence. And so have the most, oh yeah, I haven't got the most blue, have I? Because he's got loads. So this is each stall from any player on the gold street. So that's three at the moment. Half the most blue is not going to happen. This is each store I own on the blue street. That's two. Each store I own on the pink street is two. So they're four each. Maybe they're the ones to get. So I spent my cube again. And that is it. I don't think I've done this. <laughs> but let's see, let's see if I get anything but the very bottom rank. 
So let's do my normal scoring, and this is here. So you get points, e you get wigs equal to the whole size of your ships, so that is four altogether. Each set of rubble cubes is worth three, so that is three times five, that's a lovely 15. So that puts me on 97. Then we do these cards. So we've got four, eight, 12, 16, I've got one in every street and that is six, so 22, 26, because I've got two ships there, 27, 28, 29 on the west there, and then 30, one, two, three, four, five, six, 37. Every, every five race, is a wig, so that is one more. Oh wait, that was decree cards. This is shop majority. <laughs> oh well, I've just done them in a different order. These are the points for each type of ship, each type of shop. Uh, these are, so I've done the most gold, so I get three, Lacerda gets one. Pink is three for him, he wins that, he gets nine to my three. Brown is just me, so that is nine. He doesn't get anything because he hasn't got any browns. And then blue is him again, so he gets six. And I get two. Now, I was going to do them all me and then all him, but majorities we have to do him as well. On hired officials, he absolutely did the most. There's the majority for this. He starts with more than me, so I would have had to do a lot more than just these three. So he gets 15 to my five. And then it's two wigs for each favour tile you've got left. I've got one. So let's do the special bits for the Serta scoring. He gets the value of the ships he owns, which is six. Oh, I shouldn't cover up my scoring marker, should I? He gets a wig for each rubble cube. Let's take a look. He's got three, six, nine, 12, 13. Majorities we've done. He doesn't get money or influence. Three wigs for each de <laughs> decree. Wow. Six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 33, 36. And then two wigs for each royal favour. He's got two of them, so he gets four more points. One, two, three, four. So I've at least managed to beat him in points. Okay, this is a good sign. So, Jester, this is your rank. So Jester, if you have fewer wigs than Lacerda, or fewer than four stores, no, or no majorities, I've got majorities, less than five money, I had five money, uh, fewer than four decrees. I've got more than that. So servant, I've got more wigs than Lacerda. I've got four or more stores. I've got one or more majorities. I had five money and I've got more than six decrees. Okay then, so to be King's favorite, more wigs than Lacerda, done. At least as many stores, no, he put all of his stores out. I was one short, I couldn't afford to do one at the very end. So I am a court servant, which is okay. I'm not jester at least. I thought I'd done really, really badly in that, but came out okay, didn't it? Uh, so yeah, king's favorite, you would need 10 or more Reyes at the end, seven or more decrees, one or more ships. But to be the Marquis's right hand, you need more wigs, more stores, more stores. So you need to, you know, get it. I think the, the first period I let go on too long. I should have been trying to rattle through that a bit, I think. Three or more majorities, 20 or more Reyes, eight or more decrees, and two or more ships. So there we go. That is Lisboa. I hope that gives you some semblance of how this is played and how the solo version works. If you'd like to know what I think, you can click the link on here. But thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.